We're speaking up about diversity and inclusion. I'm Lindsay Bridges, and during this podcast series, I'll have the privilege of chatting to some amazing people from all around the globe and hearing their stories. I hope you'll enjoy this as much as I do. It's International Women's Day this month, and I'm really, truly excited today to be talking to somebody that I admire hugely for her advocacy for women in leadership. Sabina Muller is DPDHL's Managing Director of our DHL Consulting Business Unit. Sabina, thank you so much for joining me today. I really am thrilled to have you on the programme. And I want to start with a very simple question and just if you could just tell us your story. Okay, so I think I ended up uh, by incident uh, more than 20 years ago uh, with logistics or with Deutsche Post at that time before we bought DHL, so uh, many, many years back. And the reason was that I was always very interested in uh, solving complex problems. So I was like, I had math and physics in in school and I loved it. And then I studied economics as well with uh, with the main on math and some of these things. It's like, what can I do that is complicated and I think all my friends ended up in consumer goods or retail and they were looking at me it's like why are you going into logistics and um, that's what I tried and I said yeah maybe in, after two years I might leave and do something cool so working with with consumer or L'Oreal or something that's really cool or was cool at that time but um, yeah then I joined Deutsche to post and um, yeah I found for many many years always cool things to do and I think the whole industry or the company has gone through a massive transformation and uh, so that's what kept me and now I'm there and um, heading DHL consulting since uh, more than 10 years uh, at the moment and um, yeah together with my team we still we help the company to get even better so digitalization sustainability and all these areas are, are, are still very interesting. You really do have an exciting remit in your current role in, in DHL Consulting, particularly thinking about our strategy. But, but I want to take you back a little bit, maybe to your to your, just your early career. When you joined Deutsche Post, I'm I'm guessing it was quite a male dominated world back then. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So it was a purely male world. I think there has been a lot of change. However, I had a steering committee like two weeks back and there were two women out of 10 people. So yes, things have changed, but it's still a a male dominated world. So um, we still have a way to go. And why do you think that is? And what are those kind of challenges that that maybe you faced and that other, other women face when trying to get into businesses like ours and then progress through in terms of that career ladder? So I think when when looking back a little bit, so what was most difficult for me was to really learn and find out what are the rules of the game. And um, what I experienced and what we still have is that the rules of the game are based on male behaviors and I had to learn them. And coming from a very traditional background, I had to learn to be loud. I had to learn to just shout out if I have something, interrupt people, because if you don't do this, it's hard to really make your point and be he- be heard. So I think for me, that was the biggest learning and the biggest thing to just to get and overcome my own biases and learn the rules of the game. And I think that's how big companies work. They're like rules, they're politics, and I think you have to find out how it works. That's really interesting because... If you have to kind of learn the rules, as you say, and learn to be loud or domineering or cut people off and things that maybe wouldn't naturally come to you, how does how does that sit with you in terms of bringing your authentic self to work? It's something I advocate for is that people should bring their true selves to work every day. But these things are potentially in conflict. Right. That's, that's fully right. So I do think that was 20 years ago when I started and when we had no discussion on diversity and inclusion, it was just the way it was and nobody reflected on it. I think now we are like 20 years ahead and I do think we need to change the culture, not the women. 
I learned to change. At that time, we changed the women. So I went to trainings on body language to sit like very male, like take room. Like I was taught to take room at the table. So don't sit there, like take room, be loud. So I had voice trainings. I had body language trainings. And that was very normal like at that time. Today we say we need to give feedback and say, we would do it differently and you shouldn't treat us like this, like females do things differently and that's well. So I think we've come a long way, but um, this is just changing in the last year. So I just see in the last years that people openly give feedback and say, hey, I don't need to do the minutes because I'm the only female in the room. Like, let's rotate it or things like this. That was very normal. And I think we are changing it, but there's a lot, there's still a way to go. Do you know, you're right. And if even I think back in my, you know, my early career, I, like you, came into to shipping and then logistics, firstly in operations, then into HR. But, but the number of times I do end up, did end up, maybe even do end up still taking the minutes or, you know, checking in who wants a cup of coffee. Um, it kind of kind of falls yeah. naturally to us, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think it's, uh, we had a call like, Two weeks back, it was a steering committee and we were three ladies and like four or five men. And the guys were dialing in and said like, oh, what a cool steering committee with three so good looking ladies. It's like, huh? what is this an intro in 2022? Yeah, is this an intro you do? Like, how would it feel if I could come in and say, oh, what a cool steering committee with three so really good looking guys. It's like everybody would think like I'm crazy, yeah? <laughs> it, it is still you're right it's still a factor for us even today even with all of the education that, that goes around it there are still many many things that we need to continue to improve right that's right yeah but i do think like giving feedback and i think that's what we are starting to do giving feedback even in the situation or, or afterwards in a one-on-one -on -one is very good and i never got a negative reaction when giving feedback. It was just me holding me back to give this feedback because I was afraid. It's like, can I really go to my boss and tell him that I don't like if he asked the guys on Porsche and football and me on the kids, or is this not appropriate? Like, and then I did it and it was okay. It was good. So he said like, thank you. I never realized that. Thanks for the feedback. So, and I do think that's what we do need to do more. We need to, to at the, in the moment say, Hey, that's just, I don't feel equally treated. I, I couldn't agree more. And there's a, there's a time and a place, isn't there, for calling it out in the meeting, in the moment, if it's banter and you can do it in a comfortable way. Um, but I agree, there's also a time and a place for going afterwards to someone and saying, hey, you may not realise the impact of what you said or what you did. All right, yeah. Um, so the subject of kind of woman empowerment, it's become, it's become really popular these days. Do you think it's um, just a, a thing, a kind of, you know, passing sort of thing that will come and will go? Or do you really think that organisations, you know, mean it? And does it really make a difference in terms of all the things that we're trying to do? It's a difficult question. And I always a little bit um, like I do have problems with female empowerment. So I, I think... To be coming from a, like as a female, I think to be successful, at least in a big company like ours, you need to be visible. So people need to see you and you need to raise your hand if, if you want something. Because waiting until you will be asked or somebody sees you and asks you to, to go for the next role might work, but might also not work. Um, I think the whole thing of networking is very important. You need to be you need to, or I think for me, it was always good to raise my hand before and say, hey, that's something I would like to do, or that's that's where I would go. And I think that's what I see more and more, and that's what I always would encourage females as well to do it. So, so really, like, be visible, raise your hand, even if it's two steps ahead. If somebody tells me that's a job I would like to do, I still have it in my mind whenever the job comes up, and then I can say, hey, what about her, like, Check, uh, check out. So I, I think the whole thing of being visible, being heard or having an opinion or standing also in for a topic is very important. Um, do we as companies are there yet to empower females? I think we are on a way. Um, we do a lot 
do we and I think we mean it as well, but we we are still in terms of results, not where we should be. Uh, I think these are two things, and yes, it's a journey, and maybe we started it a little bit late, um, and we are getting there. However, it's always hard to change this old boys network and to really drive the change from the top. I think we are good by driving change from the bottom and on a lower level we are still not good driving the change from the top and like on like SVPs, VP levels and really empower females there. And for me female empowerment is much more than like having uh, a, a mentoring or women's program where females look at Star Wars and say, uh, do or don't do, or look at Alice in Wonderland. I think it's more than reading articles. Um, I would wish that like we as a company push females or just give them the opportunity to show. Just give them the job. Don't like push them to more programs. Just promote them on the job. Do you know, what you've said is very interesting. There's a few things I want to pull out, and I'll come back to the the, the feedback and the networking and the, and the self-promotion in a moment. But one of the things you've said, and, and many people have said to me, I'm a female, you've told me I've got potential, and you're going to put me on this program before I get promoted. So you're going to make me work harder and do all this extra stuff that I need to do to prove that I can do a job, and, and you're not putting my male counterparts on the same program. Is that something that you've had people talk to you about? Yeah, so I got especially this feedback. So why do I have to read more articles on digitalization? Why do I have to read more articles on self-confidence? Nobody knows if I'm self-confident or not. Yes, it's always better to be even more self-confident, but this is already a bias. So we put a bias in that females are less confident and they that they have like something to learn before they can go. And I think some people think that it's like females don't think that they need it and the males they on the other side also got feedbacks like why do we have these programs for females why don't can't i have this special treatment as well so i don't know so i got different feedbacks there yeah you're right you almost you um you try to do the right thing for one group and, and inadvertently have another group feeling that they're they're not getting that support but there's also a bit of me that thinks you know if we've got a, a group female or anything else that are that are a minority group and we want to change that we have to do something special and different because just letting it go in the status quo isn't going to make the change so i read a cool article on the imposter syndrome and there was like this a lot of these programs have like hypotheses that are biased they are biased that women are not visible enough women need to talk to board members to get a position women are not conscious enough and i think that is just not fair. I think women are as confident as men. Like they are very confident one, middle and non so confident one. But that's true for every for for males as well. So I think that's still something we have to reflect on. And I think like the intention is good behind it. I think that's that's important. I think that's a really important point. I mean, the intention of many of these programs or initiatives or support mechanisms that we put around for development, the intention is positive and is good, but sometimes it doesn't play out in the same way because you're right, we, we stereotype people by nature. I want to pick up on the point you made a few moments ago, Sabina, you were talking about networking and becoming visible. It, you know, what advice, if you look back on your own career, you know, what advice would you give to your younger self if you were able to do that? I do think I started the power of networks. I always said like, oh, I don't have time. So whew, I'm so busy. I don't have now time for, for networking. And um, I was just putting it as a priority, like a low priority for, for many time. And then some, when I started, I think I started my real networking too late. I started when I tried, so I, I, I'm heading DHR consulting now so more than 10 years. And at some, when I said like, okay, we, we I, I would like to go to conferences. So I would like to also be a speaker because, because we have cool projects, we have cool results. So I also want to be on a conference and speak. 
I tried to start it in Germany and this was somehow a network I couldn't enter. So this was where a lot of mail at that time. So it's 10 years ago and it was just a group, like a fixed network. And they said like, yeah, here are 10,000 euros if you want to speak a point and so on. And so on. And it was really difficult. So it was like a family and you were not a family member. And then I said, okay, what, what can I do? And then I started with social media and that made a change. And I think the whole opportunity today to also network and be visible, not like physically interacting with the people, but being visible because you are an expert on a topic and you can build networks or like talk to people who are expert in the same area through social media that helped a lot. So it took me a while, but I do now have a very good network. And like, I think a lot of this started physical or virtually and then went to physical or virtual like or vice versa and that that helped a lot in terms of having connection but also getting inspired and um, so on the one side being seen being seen as an expert um, but also getting ideas and being inspired for for new topics so I think what I hear you saying is that not only is the networking helpful for you it's helpful for for your job role not you necessarily as a female, and it helps you in terms of just getting those external ideas and being able to, to exchange ideas as well, I guess, with other people who are like-minded, who are working on similar topics. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that, that is a, that's an important one. I want to pick up on the point on social media. Uh, Sabina, you're incredibly active uh, on social media, particularly on LinkedIn. What, what motivates you to do that? What inspires you to do that? So we... At DHL Consulting said like we are we were when I started as well a very male and German organization said like okay let's change this and then we looked at the applications and the applications that came in were 80% male and 80% German and then out of this we picked 10% female so and we said like we need to change it so we need to see do we have like how do we get more like females attracted for the job. Um, how do we and how do we have to change as well our process to get more females uh, make more females an offer the same for for um, for um, nationalities however nationalities was much easier um, and then and we defined a strategy and we looked at the data and said what we need to do and one point was always go on social media so Facebook LinkedIn that's what we defined and then I said okay Social media is important. We work with an agency. We got a social media strategy. I gave it to my head of HR at that time, Roland, and said to Roland, go for it. Next year, yeah, you make social media. And then a year later, we came back and it's like, ah, what about social media? Like, whew, I had so many things I, I needed to do. And that, I didn't do social media, yeah, but we do it next year. And um, then I thought, I was like, we won't get there if I would not try it. And then I started. I started to go the first steps. There was a corporate influencer program at that time. There were 10 people in the company who got a coach on like uh, for the first steps. So they helped us to set up the profiles and gave us some hints at the beginning. And then I started. And um, I think that's one of my management learnings. I think if you want to change um, as a leader, you need to lead the change and role model the change because otherwise it will not happen. And so I started my journey. I started to be visible. And um, I do think last year we had around 40% of the applications that came in were female. So yes, a long way. Yes, a long time at not only my social media activities, but uh, it made a difference. And out of 40% uh, female applications, we can also make 40% um, offers and hopefully get as well 40% females joining us. And yeah, that's that's really a big difference. It's fantastic though, isn't it? That actually the relatively simple act of just showcasing what you do on social media generates that kind of brand impression and then attracts people in. And we've seen it recently as well. I did some analytics review of some of our recruitment campaigns and you could clearly see from from the analytics that when we put on a photograph or a video of a female um, driver the applications from females went up and it was absolutely correlated so you can see the um, the influence that it has yeah that's right 
And I do, and I, I was really overwhelmed, or I'm still overwhelmed about all the feedback and the interactions I get. And I have a lot of people as well in DPDHL. They are now just sending me emails that like, I need your help here or there. What would have never happened before? So I think it, it's powerful. It's, it's good. I mean, it's the modern form of networking, isn't it? It is, and I think often, um, you, you like now COVID is hopefully over, um, we also would have the possibility to do like physically network as well. That would be good. I've started to get out. Would be great. I've started to get out and about a little bit more this week and it is so nice to be able to, to meet people face to face. So we've talked quite a lot, um, Sabina, we've talked about networking, both physical and, and social media. We've talked about um, the need for people to, to push themselves forward, to not be afraid. We've talked a little bit about the kind of pros and cons of bespoke development programs. Is there anything else from a kind of, um, you know, advisory point of view that you would give to, to the folks who are listening here on the podcast? So one advice I would give to my younger self is like, you don't need to be liked by everyone. I think you need to be respected in, in the job. You don't need to be liked. And I think that was difficult for me because um, like starting many years back, some meetings were also tense in terms of voice and people were shouting and it happened that people, like I was thrown out of a room because I had like a non-favorite opinion and I tried to voice it twice. And uh, this really, like I went back home and I just took it with me and I learned to also like leave meetings with not a consens to not on, always be the one like trying to solve it or ease it or end up with okay then hmm, I might yeah I think about it so I learned just to endure as well like sometimes yeah I'm not sure like non consents or issues and I think that's important I think people need to respect you you know, don't need to be loved by everyone and uh, that helps a lot, at least in a big company. Maybe in a startup it's different, but in a huge company, I think that's, a, that's very important. That's quite interesting when you think to anyone, maybe in the in their early career journey, you know, coming out of, of college or university, coming into their first roles in an organisation. I guess that that desire to to get on well is is coupled with that desire to be liked. So I think that's a very important piece of advice to anyone uh, starting out in the business or getting promoted. So Sabina, before we wrap up today, there is one more area I think it would be great to discuss with you. And that's the topic of, of targets and setting targets um, for women in leadership or in fact for other aspects of diversity. So let's chat about that. I would love to see your perspective as well, because we're talking a lot about quotas and targets in Germany at the moment, uh, in supervisory board, but also in boards. And um, I have changed my opinion on this, like within the last year significantly. What's your view on dedicated targets for managers on, on diversity, Inclus including like getting like incentive, incentivizing it? Do I have a view on that? I mean, we don't, certainly within our supply chain business, we don't incentivize it. We have some some aspirational goals that we'd like to get to. I, I don't know if I'd go as far to say that's a target. I think there's real pros and cons to that. I really do. Because, you know, when you, when you measure something, it tends to get focused and gets done. You know, when it's incentivized, it gets even more focused and, get done, and gets done. What we need to do is make sure that we have... Um, the right processes around it that we're not putting people into roles that they can't achieve in or we're not making bad hiring decisions based on on someone's diversity line rather than their capability to do the job so i think i see it from both sides um i don't know what do you think i think we need to be we need to so we take a bit very seriously we take cash flow seriously and we measure our manager on it managers on it i think we should do the same for diversity i would go a little bit bigger for esg um i think we need to set target there because otherwise it will not change and yes maybe 
you take different hiring decision, but I don't think, I think we wouldn't go for a female that is not capable for the job. We just have to look further. We have to look externally. I think there's always an opportunity. And I think if we want to make a change, we must like put a target on it. And that would be a very bold thing to do. I know um, one of the things that I am in support of is um, targets on candidate slates. So making sure that when we're making choices, we have, you know, we don't just have a list of, of white male candidates on a candidate slate. And I've pushed back on people and said, go try harder and find me some diverse candidates who can do the job. Um, because I think in some cases we don't even do that today. Yeah, that's right. But our, however, I do think we m too often measure input, not output. And that's what we don't do for EBIT. So if I don't achieve my EBIT target, I would get zero uh, zero bonus. Nobody will ask me what the input was. And it's like, but I did it. I solved this project. I did this. I worked this hours. Nobody will be interested in it. So like, it's great to have two females on the long list if they will never make it. So I would say output, not process. Interesting. I mean, it would be a very bold thing to do. And, and maybe you're right. When we look at our ESG goals and targets, as we move into our future strategy, maybe, maybe it's the time to be bold. I just want to move now into our closing, our quick fire round, if we can. Um, so I've got a few quick fire questions for you. One or two word answers, if that's okay with you. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, good. So what does diversity mean to you? Um, embracing and celebrating the richness of different perspectives. Oh, I love that. Richness of different perspectives. Thank you. If you think back to the last few years, what's the biggest area of change that you've seen in the diversity and inclusion agenda? Speaking about it so that we really openly address it um, and talk about it and have, like, have it as part of our strategy. That was not before. Yeah. Getting it out on the table, having it as part of something yeah. we talk about. So then if we look forward, how do you see the future of diversity and inclusion? Hopefully 50-50. And like also, like it's not only on gender, it's more, it's, it's also on nationality. So I hope that we really can build a very diverse workforce. Yeah, I do as well. I think that's, that is important. And this episode has been about gender this time, but, but you're right, it's much broader than that. I completely agree. Um, and then the final question is, um, I know you listen to a lot of, uh, of podcasts, but what is your favourite podcast that you're listening to at the minute? So what I'm always lo listening to is the Leaders in Supply Chain with Rado. I'm not sure if you listen to them. That's a great one. I always listen in it. So Sabina, thank you so much for joining us today. I've thoroughly enjoyed the discussion. Thanks for sharing a little bit about your early career and some of those challenges you faced. I love your advice to people around uh, getting themselves out there, networking, um, being being brave in terms of taking that next um, next step, that next decision. I also really enjoyed our discussion and uh, exchange around both programs uh, bespoke for different diversity lines and the discussion we've just had at the end on, on whether we should be much, much bolder in terms of making output focused targets for, for gender diversity and potentially other diversity lines. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you today. Thanks for the invitation. And um, yeah, I will come back next year and then we see uh, what we achieved since uh, within 12 months. So thank you very much. That's it for this episode. Please look out for us next month when I'll be talking to some more interesting guests from around the world. And don't forget, you can hear us on Spotify, on Apple or on YouTube. And we'd love it if you left us a review and give us your feedback. Thanks a lot.